So as a recap, cosine theta is equal to the x coordinate, sine theta is equal to the y coordinate on the unit circle. That's the most important part of the unit circle, to knowing this fact. That's, that's where it really helps us quickly get these important cosine and sine values. The sine value, uh, pardon me, the tangent value would just be the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate on the unit circle. So tan of any angle is the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. Same definition we used when we discussed basic trigonometry. So I'm going to show you that the 30, 45, uh, the 30, 60, 90, two of them triangles are within this first quadrant, and a 45, 45, 90 is within that first quadrant. So the 30, 60, 90 would be here, and then a vertical drop to here, and then a horizontal here. There's a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. The um, 45, 45, 90 would be right here within this unit circle right here. Here's its vertical, here's its horizontal. There's a 45, 45, 90 triangle within. The 30, 60, 90 just rotated around, different orientation is right here with the 60 degree angle here, the 30 degree angle here. So we have the same triangle. It's just rearranged compared to the one that we used right here for the uh, 30 degree angle. So I'm going to draw those triangles quickly and show you where these values come from. So we'll do that in the next part. All right, so here is our 30, 60, 90 special triangle with the 30 degree angle being down in the lower left corner to map to this angle right here. Now this is the way we learned it when we did, that's 30 there. Um, we learned it this way, the ratios of sides were the 30 degree side was one, the 90 degree side was two, 60 degree side was square root of three. That's the way we learned this. Well, when we're using the unit circle, it's a circle with a radius of one. So we need to make this equal to one. Well, how do we do that? How do you make two into one? Well, you cut it in half. You divide it by two, you cut it in half. So half of two, I'm just gonna change the ratios around. Half of two is one. Half of one is one half. Half of square root of three is square root of three over two. And now look at your unit circle here for the 30 degree angle. The x coordinate is square root of three over two, right here. The y coordinate is one half, right here. And then the radius, this section here is one because that's what the unit circle is, a radius of one. So next I'll do the 45, 45, 90 in the same way. All right, here's our 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is the way we learned it in basic trigonometry. The ratios were one, one, and square root of two. Well, the same thing applies here. We need to change the ratio around the ratios around a bit so that our hypotenuse here, the radius here, is equal to one. Well, how do I turn square root of two into one? I divide it by square root of two. So it becomes one. Let me do that in black here. So I'm having to divide by square root of two. Well, if I divide one by square root of two, I have to rationalize it, do it up here. So I'm dividing each of these pieces. If I divide this piece by square root of two to keep the ratio intact, I have to divide the other components by square root of two. So if I take the one that was here, divide it by square root of two, rationalize now, can't leave a radical in the denominator, I get square root of two over two. And that's the x coordinate down here, so it equals square root of two over two. Same thing here, if I work it out like I did here, you're gonna get square root of two over two. And notice those are your uh, x and y coordinates. Both are square root of two over two. So that shows that we have this 45, 45, 90 triangle inside the unit circle. And it's four places there, here, here, and here. So it, the same triangle is within that circle four times. Uh, right there. I know the squiggly lines probably make it a little more confusing. I should have used straight lines. But you see that in each of the quadrants, 45, 45, 90 triangle lays in there with a radius of one being the hypotenuse. Let's look at the uh, 30, 60, 90 with the 60 degree angle being in the lower left corner down here next. All right, so now we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle the way we uh, learn it, 60 degree side square root of three, 30 degree side one, hypotenuse uh, or radius, however you wanna look at it, is two. So on the unit circle, we need a radius of two. So I, pardon me, a radius of one. So how do I make that into one? Well, I divide it by two and it becomes one. So if I divide that by two, I have to divide this one by two. So it becomes one half. 
if I divide the other two by two, I have to divide this by two to keep the ratios the same. So now the same triangle could have this ratio, one, one half squared to three over two. So the x coordinate is one half, here it is. The y coordinate here is squared to three over two, here it is, with a radius of one. This is a radius right here of one, okay? So try to do a better job here and show these four 30, 60, 90 triangles within the uh, triangle, uh, pardon me, the unit circle. So we have these three, th these four 30, 60, 90 triangles within here. So in each of the four quadrants, we could lay in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And in each case, go back to this brighter line color, the X coordinate would be one half, the Y coordinate would be square root of three over two, and the radius here would be one. So Y coordinate square root of three over two, X coordinate one half, radius of one. So that is the unit circle uh, in detail. You may need to watch this more than once. You may need to have uh, work with another student to work through the process, but you have to get to where you can build this unit circle from scratch, just like it's uh, adding two plus two. It's gotta be automatic for you. You have to work at it, you have to practice it, until it's automatic. It is very important. We're going to use it for weeks and you're going to use it when you get to calculus. So you have to learn it. Don't just look for patterns and quickly memorize it. You need to be able to build it from scratch and make sense of it. One final concept here in, in applying this part up here, which is the most important part. So let's say that you were asked to find cosine of um, five pi over six. Okay, so you go to your unit circle, five pi over six, cosine of any angle is equal to just the x coordinate. So the exact value of cosine of five pi over six is the x value there, so negative square root of three over two. Let's say you were asked to find sine of uh, two pi over three. Sine of two pi over three. So sine is equal to the y coordinate on the unit circle. So you go to two pi over three, you get the y coordinate positive square root of three over two. Let's say that you're asked to find uh, cosine of 11 pi over six. So you go to 11 pi over six on your unit circle, get the y coordinate, pardon me, the x coordinate, square root of three over two. Let's say you're asked to find sine of 210 degrees. So you go to your unit circle to 210 degrees, we're looking for sine, y coordinate there is negative one half. And those are the exact values. So that's how, once you uh, have the unit circle filled out, you know it, uh, that's what you can do with it. That's why it is valuable. Uh, for tangent, you would just do the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So let's do one of those quickly. So tangent of, let's just do five pi over six. Tangent five pi over six. So it'd be the y coordinate so one half divided by the x coordinate, negative square root of three over two. So flip and multiply, so it would be one half times two over square root of three, and it would be negative. So the twos cancel, you get negative one over square root of three, rationalize. So you get negative square root of three over three is the exact value of tangent five pi over six. Those are the most difficult, obviously, because you have to divide the two x and y components. But that's how you use the unit circle to get exact trig values of these special angles.